Hello and welcome to Sarastro's Painting. In this video I'll be painting all of the terrain that comes with the cooperative dark fantasy game Oathsworn Into the Deepwood by Shadowborn Games. The game comes with six walls, five trees and two cabins, and in this episode I'll be using some nice easy techniques to capture the rich and atmospheric mood of the board. Here's a quick summary of my approach. I'll be priming the terrain in black, followed with a zenithal pattern of light and shade. We can then apply the main colours, where I'll be freely wet blending various tones from the contrast range, and you can use whatever speed paints you like here. I'll then be finishing things off with some additional mossy textures and leaf litter, and painting a few final optional details. Let's begin. Before priming, I decided to drill into the cabin chimneys with a hand drill, and cut away the excess bits of plastic to create a more realistic look. This is pretty optional of course, you could simply paint this part black, or maybe build a bird's nest on top. It took me about 5 minutes to clear out each chimney. Next I'm gluing all of the trees together with superglue, providing a fair bit of force for the lower parts to get the joins as tight as possible. To fill in any small gaps left between the parts, I'm simply brushing on some Mod Podge, and there are a range of products you could use to do this. As another little optional touch, I decided to glue down a couple of resin skulls to add to the atmosphere. I then primed the whole lot off camera using a black rattle can primer to save time. Next I'm providing some zenithal highlights, firstly using a mid grey tone. You could use whatever grey you like for this. I'm using white ink mixed with a few drops of black, along with a little matte varnish to take the shine off. You can see I'm hitting most of the model with this, mainly from a roughly overhead angle to allow the deeper recesses to remain black. If you don't have an airbrush, you could either use a rattle can or use a large dry brush or makeup brush instead. Just remember to pull the brush in a mostly downwards motion as you go. I'm building this grey up in a couple of layers. I'm now pushing the values further with some pure white, focusing on the most upturned parts of the model. We can also be a little patchy, creating random hot spots of light to add interest. Finally, I'm going to do some dry brushing with some pure white. This just means using a large brush and wiping most of the paints away, before dragging the brush repeatedly across the surface of the model in a mostly downward motion. This is just to ensure that all of the edges and details are as sharply defined as possible. It's also a useful way to articulate the texture of the more shadowed parts of the trees that I might have missed with the airbrush. You can also use a regular brush to provide some edge highlighting to the main edges of the hut if you like. Once we're happy with the values, we're ready to add some colour. I'm starting with the walls, where I've chosen to paint the stones using Griff Charger Grey, blended freely with some Basilicarnum Grey and some Skeleton Hoard. I'm placing the colours in a plastic palette so I can work quickly without worrying about contaminating the pots. I'm now applying the paint to all of the areas of rock, whilst avoiding the patches of moss. You can see I'm sticking mainly to the greyish tones, but mixing in some of the skeleton hoard to create a nice bit of tonal variety, and I'm freely wet blending the colours on the model. Now 
Needless to say, you don't have to use these exact colours of course, and I'd encourage you to have a play around with whatever tones you like. Here I'm just soaking up some of the excess paint where I don't want it to pool. And we can even use our fingers to rub the paint off places like the edges whilst it's still damp. Once that's dry, I'm now painting the moss where I'm using mainly orc flesh and plague bearer flesh, along with a little agaros dunes. Once again, I'm just looking for a nice bit of organic variety. Apart from applying some matte varnish and optional leaf litter, this completes the walls. Next I'm moving on to the trees where, for the lighter upper half, I'll mainly be using Skeleton Horde, which I'll be varying with some Plague Bearer Flesh and some Margos Purple. For the lower half I've chosen to use Wildwood, which I'm thinning and desaturating with some Griff Charger Grey, and I might also use some Orc Flesh. So here I'm mixing some Griff Charger Grey into the Wildwood, which is just a little too dark and heavy out of the bottle for my liking. I'm now painting the upper half of the trees using mostly Skeleton Horde and Plague Bearer Flesh, along with some patches where I'm also mixing in some Margos Purple. You can see I'm not bothered about painting the vines in a different colour, both in the interests of speed, and also because in nature they often have the same colour as the trees anyway. I'm now using the Wildwood and Griff Charger Grey mix for the lower portion of the tree, and blending it up into the lighter part above. I'm taking care to avoid the areas of rock and fungal growths, and here you can see I'm mixing in some of the Orc Flesh. I'm now using some of the greyish colours I used for the walls. And for the outer part of the fungal growth, I'm going to play around with some Volupus Pink and Margos Purple. The Volupus Pink is a pretty intense colour, whereas the Margos Purple is a fair bit thinner. And for the bulbous growths in the middle, I chose to use Plague Bearer Flesh. These are now looking pretty good, and you could absolutely stop here if you like. I've decided I'd like to add an extra layer of green mossiness to the lower parts of the trees, which I'm going to achieve using some fine turf by Jarvis. This comes in dark, mid and light variants, which you can now see me mixing with some Mod Podge and a little water. I'm now stippling this mainly onto the lower half of the trees, trying the different colours out as I go. This is super fun and easy to do, and you could really take it as high up the tree as you like. We can build the texture up in more than one layer to our liking.
Finally, I'm painting the cabins, where I'm starting with the wooden roofs. For this, I'm using roughly the same colours that I used for the upper trees, along with some touches of Griff Charger Grey to desaturate the tone. And here I'm using the Wildwood and Griff Charger Grey mix for the recesses. I'm continuing round the panel work in the same way, and we'll be creating a fair bit of shadow caused by the overhanging roof. Holding the model upside down just helps to get the paints to flow up into the recesses. I sometimes like to use a hairdryer to speed up the drying process. I'm now painting the mossy growths using the same colours that I used for the walls. And the same is true of the stonework. Here I'm doing a little further darkening and desaturating with some Griff Charger Grey. And I'm once again adding plenty of mossy greens, just like I did with the trees. I've now decided to give the whole set a spray with some ultra matte varnish, so I can get a clearer idea of how things are looking. You could of course do this at the very end instead. This is pretty optional, but here I'm painting the door handle with a bluish grayscale. And we can use pretty much any pale yellowish tone to provide some quick edge highlights with the side of the brush tip. I'm also providing a little colour for the skulls. Next I thought I'd add some autumn leaf litter, which I'm gluing down with some thinned Mod Podge. We can also apply some leaves to the trees and the walls. And to finish things off, I thought it would be fun to sketch out a witch's pentagram on the door of one of the cabins, using scale colours Deep Red and Antares Red. After plotting out the five points of the star, I'm now joining the dots, then drawing the circle. And this completes the terrain for Oathsworn into the deep wood. Thank you so much for joining me, I do hope you found the video useful. As usual, you can find full product lists in the video description, along with links to Oathsworn on Kickstarter, as well as all of the places I can be found online, including the music platforms. My very special thanks go to my kind patrons for funding this work. If you'd like to support what I do, feel free to hit the Patreon link to find out how you can help.
Join me again soon as I continue painting miniatures from Oathsworn into the Deepwood. Happy painting!